So the people we've brought together here are convinced that recycling water is a good idea. We went to Essex to see what the people there think. Personally, I'd drink bottled water. That'd be my option. Why is that? Uh, it tastes better. Now and again, it has a, a quite a strong taste to it, but um, we've never had any reason to complain about it. Mm. I mean, the water around here is terrible anyway. Yeah, I don't really drink the water from out the taps. What do you do? Oh, you have a fizzy pop or you get some um, bottled water. I have no complaints over any of it now. Well, I mean, it's not as nice as some areas, but uh, I have no complaints about it. It doesn't have any particular flavour or chlorine taste at all, so I don't really think about it very much, to be honest. The quality here appears quite good. I, I drink water quite a lot. Um, the art of being a professional drinker is to drink water. It stops you being dehydrated. But the water is pretty good. Well, it, it tastes all right. I mean, what's in it, you, you don't really want to want to look at the, what happens to it, how, how many processes or how many people it goes through before you get it. It's, as long as it's treated right, it should be fine, but uh, there's just a sort of thing in the back of your mind that thinks, well, somebody's already drunk this once, so it's a little bit sort of unnerving. There's obviously quite a bit of unease there among people in Essex about the whole idea of drinking recycled water, particularly since it's effluent. Given that we're an island nation, why can't we just draw more of our drinking water from out of the sea? Yes, it must seem very tempting because we see right next to where we're taking this water. Unfortunately, if we did, the water would be several times more expensive than it currently is. And not only that, but re uh, desalination of water actually has dire environmental consequences. Pauline, what are they? Well, there are two main aspects to that. The first is that the desalination process, which essentially is the sort of membrane technology we've talked about earlier, produces a very concentrated liquor afterwards which has to be disposed of and that in itself is quite a problem. You've got a lot of very highly concentrated and potentially toxic salts in the, the discharge. Secondly, it's a very energy intensive process, that's why it costs so much, it's the energy and the power that's being used to push the water through the membranes and that in itself is an environmental issue for the agency. We're not just about regulating water, we're regulating the entire environment. So that gives you just a taste of the complexities facing the water companies and the regulators when it comes to the simple task of supplying us all with drinking water. And now I'd like to turn the question back on to us, whether we, the consumers, are really doing as much as we could. Claire, what do you think? Well, when you consider that something like 30% of the water that's being treated to drinking water standards at considerable expense to both water companies and to the consumers is actually used for flushing the toilet, should we be doing something possibly to look at how we flush toilets? Um, and in fact, the UK is more or less leading the world here in designing toilets that have a lower rate of flush, are more economical in the way that they use water, so that we're not wasting anything like that much of a precious resource in literally putting it down the drain. Catherine, what do you think? Certainly, I, I agree with Claire that there is a lot of technology going into, into various ways of saving water, but the experience from other countries, particularly in Australia that I'm familiar with, is that a lot of these things didn't have any impact until there was legislation for them, particularly, say, in the building industry, when builders were required to install these toilets in, in houses. And I would say without that legislation, um, we have got, gone less than half the way towards minimising the waste that goes down the drain. Martin, when it comes to asking consumers what they can do, though, don't they always point back to the water companies and the fact that so much water is lost just through inefficiency on your part, broken drains, leaks, all that kind of thing? Well, there's certainly leakage from the water companies isn't acceptable. But what people have to realise is that in Essex alone, there's 8,000 kilometres of mains carrying the water, so there will always be leakage. What we do in Essex is we take the leakage down to what's called the economic level of leakage. This is where it's more expensive to find any more leaks than actually to look for new resources of water. Pauline, don't environmentalists say that we need to stop thinking of um, costs just in terms of economic costs and start thinking of the costs on the environment? I mean, is there any just leaking away of water that's really environmentally acceptable? I would agree that we need to take into account the environmental effects and to some extent there are techniques for valuing the environment but they're very imperfect and research continues to develop new ideas. 
So the agency feels that simply to stop at a simple calculated economic level isn't fairly and fully protecting the environment in all circumstances. We believe that companies should increasingly use the best available technology even where that sometimes means paying a somewhat higher price and perhaps taking them beyond the, the simply calculated economic level. However, I would have to acknowledge even what Martin says that eventually you can't stop absolutely every last leak. But you can get a considerable way further with improved technology. Martin, from the water company's point of view, what do the general public need to do? We don't want people not to use water. We don't want to alter people's habits. All we'd do is we'd ask them to use water wisely and not waste water. And this way we will get through to the future water needs. Catherine? I think that's a very reasonable point. But what I would illustrate is that the way in which companies ask people to do that isn't actually getting through. There isn't what you would consider to be a general awareness that we need to change our habits and be mindful of waste. Companies do put out the literature, but very usually in a leaflet in with the bill, which we all know from our own experience mostly goes into the bin. And it is, I think, primarily the company's responsibility to inform the public of how they can be responsible consumers. But I would also argue that the regulators, all three of them, have a role in, in contributing to that as well. Well, as is so often the case with environmental matters, there is no one simple, easy solution. If you want to supply good quality drinking water, then there must be collaboration between the suppliers, the regulators and the consumers. And you have to be willing to make compromises. So, thank you.